This video is all about sketching curves when they're given to you in polar coordinate, uh, polar equation form. So we're going to start with three simple examples and then we're going to look at some uh, three more complicated examples in a minute. The first two are pretty simple because they are, the first one is when the radius is constant, the second one is when the angle is constant. So the first one, r equals 5, means that the radius is always 5. It doesn't matter what the angle is. So whether the angle is 0, the radius would be 5. Whether the angle is pi over 6, the radius is 5. Whether the, the angle is pi over 3, or whether the angle is pi over 2, the radius will still be 5. If the angle is pi, the radius will be 5. If the angle is 3 pi over 2, the angle is 5, and so on and so on. Basically, this is a circle with radius 5. So that's nice and simple, hopefully. That's a terrible circle. I should be better at drawing circles by now. Okay, the next one. Uh, the angle is always 3 pi over 4. So let's find where that angle is. So obviously this line here is where the angle is 0. The angle pi over 2 is there. So the angle 3 pi over 4 is there, roughly. We're saying that this angle here is 3 pi over 4. So the graph is actually this line here. It's a half line. The radius changes. I'm not saying... We're talking about any particular point on this line. The radius changes, but the angle is always 3 pi over 4. So that's what that graph would look like. Next, arm equals 2 theta. Now, this is slightly more complicated than the previous ones because the radius now depends on what the angle is. It's not constant. The angle is not constant. So to help me out, I've drawn a little table of information down here. Just as we did in like GCSE when I wanted to work out if I wanted to draw a quadratic and I was like, right, here are my x values, here are my y values, and I drew a table of information and I plotted them all. I can do the same thing here. It's just that we're talking about the angles and the radius instead of x and y. So I've just picked some values of theta at the top there. I've gone up in pi over fours. You won't always need to go up in that much detail. Most of the time, you can you do less points than this. I'm just kind of going over the top just to demonstrate a point here. So I've started with 0, obviously, and then I've gone up pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and 2 pi. So I've just done a full loop in pi over 4s. And underneath, I've written the radii down. The radius is always 2 times the angle. So I've just doubled all of the angles. So 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times a pi over 4 is pi over 2. 2 times a pi over 2 is pi, and so on. Right, let's plot these then. So when the angle is 0, when I'm on the initial line, the radius is 0. So I'm starting off at the origin. When the angle is pi over 4, which is looking up here like this. That's the angle there, pi over 4. So when I'm looking along that line, the radius is pi over 2. So that's going to be something like there, roughly. The angle at that point there is pi over 4. The radius, the distance from there, is pi over 2. Next, when the angle is pi over 2, so I'm looking up here now, that's where the angle is pi over 2, the radius is bigger, it's pi. So I'm further away from the origin now. Remember that this distance here was pi over 2. This distance here now is pi. Next, when the angle is 3 pi over 4, so that's me looking in this direction, where that angle is 3 pi over 4. The radius now is 3 pi over 2. So the distance away from the origin is now going to be like that. Remember, this was my pi over 2. This is my pi. This is my 3 pi over 2. 
Next, when the angle is pi, so I'm looking along this line here, the angle is pi, the radius is 2 pi. The length of this line is 2 pi. Next, when the angle is 5 pi over 4, so I'm looking down this line now, that angle there is 5 pi over 4. The distance is 5 pi over 2, so even further away now, and so on. My point, hopefully, is that you can see that this is going to be a spiral shape. Which is what we actually saw in the last video. That whenever you have r equals some number times theta, it will give you a spiral. So, r equals a number will give you the circle. Theta equals a number, an angle, will give you a half line. And r equals a theta will give you a spiral. Let's have a look at three more complicated examples now. We're going to break this down. So the first one is r equals a times 1 plus cos theta. Now I'm not going to go into it, I'm not going to plot as many points as I did last time. I'm just going up in pi over 2s now instead of pi over 4s. The more points you do generally, the better picture you'll get. But obviously that means the more calculations and the more work you need to do. So I'm just starting with theta equals zero. So if I substituted zero in here, cos of zero is one, one plus one is two, times the a, so the radius is two a. If I now substitute pi over two in, cos of pi over two is zero, 1 plus 0 is 1, times the a, so that's a. Now substituting pi in, cos of pi is minus 1. Zero, uh, 1 plus minus 1 is 0, times the a is going to be 0. So when the angle is pi, the distance from the origin is 0. 3 pi over 2. When you substitute 3 pi over 2 in there, cos 3 pi over 2 is going to give me 0. 1 plus 0 is 1, times the a is a, and then substituting the 2 pi in as well will give me 2a. <coughs> Excuse me. Now plotting those points then. So when the angle is 0, when I'm on the initial line, the distance from the origin there is 2a. So that's my first point, angle zero, distance from origin, 2a. When the angle is pi over 2, the distance from the origin is a. So that is a. Next, when the angle is pi, so when I've gone all the way around here now, when the angle is pi, the distance from the origin is actually zero. So I'm actually going to return round back to the uh, back to the origin there. When the angle is three pi over two, so when I've gone all the way round like that, the distance from the origin is a again. So this distance here is a. And then when we've gone two pi, when we've gone all the way round, we're back to the two a. We're back where we started. So this is going to look something like this. It's going to go round like this. It's going to come back. It's going to go back into the origin. Oh, I didn't do that very well. Let me try that again. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to look something like that. So it kind of looks like a heart on its side. The mathematical name for this is a cardoid. That's the name of that shape where you have like a little dimple in here. Oh, that's, that should be an idea. There we go. Cardoid. Right. So that's the first example. Now, the second, uh, the next two examples we need to be a little bit more careful of. We didn't have to worry too much in this case here because the formula. Actually, let me do this. 
that r equals a times 1 plus cos theta, that was always going to be positive. 1 plus cos theta, this is always bigger than or equal to 0, which meant that my radius was always going to be bigger than or equal to 0. So that was fine. That's not always going to be the case, though. And the, with polar coordinates, the radius does always need to be bigger than zero. So in this case, the sine 3 theta, that's not always going to be bigger than zero. So let's think about when is it that that is less than zero. A little graph might help. So I know that the sine graph usually goes like this. That's pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and so on. The scale factor of 3 here, though, would squash it by a scale factor of 3 in the x direction. So, my new graph, if I'm drawing sine 3 theta... is going to look like this. So if this So let's say that this is pi over 3, this is 2 pi over 3, this is pi, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3 and 2 pi. So it's now going to be like this. Because it, uh, the previous graph has been squashed by a scale factor of 3. So it's no longer going through at pi. It's now going through at pi over 3. It's no longer going through at 2 pi. It's now going through at 2 pi over 3 and so on. Anyway, the point is that this sine 3 theta... It's only positive between 0 and, and pi over 3, between 2 over 3, uh, 2 pi over 3 and pi, and between 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. I only need to consider those ranges of values of theta. I don't need to consider any of the other ones because r would be negative and therefore the polar coordinate form the polar um, curve would not exist. Also bear in mind that despite what my terribly drawn graph here looks like, these are all going to be the same. This is the same as this, which is the same as this. So actually, I only need to draw, to, I only need to figure out what's going on in one of these regions and then it's going to be replicated in the other regions. So, here are my three regions that I need to find out about. I know R is positive here, here, and here. As long as I find out what's going on in one of these, then I can replicate it in the other. So I've focused on this one between 0 and pi over 3, between the angle being 0 and the angle being pi over 3. And I've split that up into 0, pi over 6, and pi over 3. So I'm just looking at the, out, uh, the, the beginning, the middle, and the end of that region. So when theta equals 0, I get a times sine of 3 times 0, which is going to be 0. When theta is pi over 6, I've got a times sine of, three, um, sine of 3 times pi over 6, which is pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that is going to be a. And then when theta equals pi over 3, sine pi over 3 is pi. Sorry, three, sine of 3 times pi over 3 is sine of pi which is 0, so that's 0 again. So what I know is that I'm, when the angle is 0, I start at 0. When the angle is pi over 6, which is roughly like that, 
the distance from the origin is A. And then when the angle is pi over 3, which looks roughly like that, that being pi over 3, I am now back at the origin. I'm back where I started. So what actually happens here is I have a loop. And I know that that loop is going to repeat between the angles of 2 pi over 3 and pi. Because I remember from the graph that all of these things behave in the same way. So 2 pi over 3 is roughly over here somewhere. And pi is here. So I'm going to have another loop between those two points. God, this is the worst graph I've ever drawn. Um, and then again, I'm going to have the same loop between 4 pi over 3, which is roughly down there somewhere, and 5 pi over 3, which is roughly down there. So I'll have the same loop like that, where each time this point here is A away from the origin. It's worth bearing in mind that actually we've got an r equals a sine 3 theta here. The 3 there, we've got three loops. That is generally true. Generally going to be the case. Right, last example for this video. <coughs> we want to sketch r squared equals a squared times cos 2 theta. Again, we want to find the values um, of when cos 2 theta is going to be positive. So let's think about what cos looks like as a graph. So cos is usually like this, but that 2 is going to squash it by a scale factor of 2. So this point here is going to move to here, this point here is going to move to here, and so on. So everything's going to get squashed by a scale factor of 2. So it is now, just bear with me. So this is going to be pi over 4 now, pi over 2, 3 pi over uh, 4, and pi, 5 pi over 4. And so on. It's going to be looking like that. And crucially here, we can see that it's positive between minus pi over 4 and pi over 4. And also between 3 pi over 4 and minus 5 pi over 4. There will be another one over, uh, over here, but that's going to be the same as this one over here, so I don't need to worry too much about that. Okay, same as last time. I'm just going to consider one of these things. I'm just going to look at one of them. I will look at um, one of these situations and then double it, because I know they're going to... Um, I'll repeat it, because I know they're going to behave in the same way. So, let's go. So I'm looking at between minus pi over 4 and pi over 4. So I've picked the middle there, 0. So when theta is minus pi over 4, if I substitute that in here, I get 0. When I substitute 0 in there, I, I'm going to get A. When I substitute pi over 4 in there, I'm going to get 0.
So in terms of plotting that, when the angle is minus pi over 4, that's the angle that's going down here like this. I'm saying that's minus pi over 4. The distance away there from the origin there is 0. When the angle with the initial line is 0, the distance from the origin is A. So that looks like that. When the angle with the origin with the initial line is plus pi over 4, we're back to the origin. So what we've got is this loop here like this. And then similarly, between 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, we're also going to have another one of these loops. That's terrible. That's not much better, but it's going to have to do. So there we go. You can see here we've got two loops. So there we go. That is how we can sketch. Um, that's how we can sketch polar coordinates. Last example, I'm going to do this really quickly. Um, you can see I've already shown all the working out. I'm just going to talk us through it. Um, the question says to show on an argand diagram the locus of points given by the values of z satisfying this um, equation. The modulus of z minus 3 minus 4i is equal to 5. So we should remember that this is, um, this is saying the distance of the points um, z away from the point 3 plus 4i is equal to 5. That's what that's saying. So we're talking about all the complex numbers that are 5 away from the point 3 plus 4i. So that is just a quick recap of part A. That's just a, a year 12 further maths problem. The key thing here is part B. Show that this locus of points can be represented by the polar curve r equals 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta. So the equation of this circle in Cartesian form is x minus 3 all squared plus y minus 4 all squared equals 25 because the center of this circle is 3, 4 and the radius of this circle is 5. I have then replaced the x with r cos theta and I've replaced the y with r sine theta. My next job, as I move from here to here, is I just expanded the brackets. r cos theta times r cos theta is r squared cos squared. r cos theta times minus 3, and then doubled it. The minus 3 times minus 3 is 9. And then I've also expanded this bracket over here to give this. And that equals 25. Next. The 9 plus 16 cancelled with the 25, so they're all gone now. Then I grouped up the r squared cos squared and the r squared sine squared and factorised the r squared outside there. And that was quite a good thing to do because then I just get left with cos squared plus sine squared in that bracket, which is 1. So then that whole equation simplifies to be this, which we can then divide both sides by r and get the answer as required. <coughs> Excuse me. So there we go. A long video about uh, drawing Cartesian, so drawing polar uh, coordinates, polar equations. Um, so just remember, r equals a constant is a circle. Theta equals a constant is a half line. R equals a theta is a spiral. And then uh, if you have R equals A times 1 plus cos theta, it's going to be a cardoid. And then also remember that if you have um, R equals A sine um, a number times theta or a number times cos, 
um, two feet or three feet or whatever, you need to only consider the regions where it's positive. So think about the graphs to decide where they are. And then um, just focus on one part of that and repeat it elsewhere.